Okay, let me put us live. Okay. Okay, we should be live. We should be live. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike Jones, I I sincerely uh, thank you uh, very much for uh, uh, giving your time, spending your much precious time uh, with uh, this such a small uh, channel in the in the international context, and I for that I'm deeply grateful to you. Much obliged. Yeah, it's my honor and pleasure. It was good talking to you. You said about ten months. Yeah, ago. ten months time ago. Time flies. Yeah. Time flies when you're. I was going to say having fun, but uh, that's not quite true. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe <laughs> enjoy myself, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, and uh, ten months ago, we we spoke about. Uh, well, I was mostly curious about the the economic, the Im the economic impact on Russian society. You were living yeah. in Saint Petersburg at the time. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we also spoke about the Buhanka and the possibility of acquiring a Buhanka at that time. You, yeah, you, 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 you hadn't uh, bought one. Uh, you hadn't. No, not at that time. Not no, at that time. Yeah, we just spoke Gosh. about. It. And it was fun to to watch uh, your adventures on the on the Buhanka, your account of the of those adventures. Yeah, I did a review. Unfortunately, the review was struck for hate speech. <laughs> that, I, I do, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, you were banned. I want to say this. Uh, Mike Jones has been uh, recently banned from YouTube. His channel. No, not just bans. The the channel I. Yeah, Ray the channel. The channel was was deleted. was deleted. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hate speech. I I ne I, ne I don't understand. It's censorship. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah that's... I had the NewsGuard article come out in February, and they were irate that I had um, reposted unbranded copies of RT's documentaries around Donbass spanning years. Yes. Uh, they were very popular. Uh, let's be let's be fair and honest. They were not monetized, as was alleged by NewsGuard. Uh, ironically, it was Google that monetized them <laughs> and was showing adverts on them. Yeah. I personally had the proof and receipts to show that I didn't monetize these. Uh, but NewsGuard were irate that I could be possibly profiting at all whatsoever within 24 hours of that article that february uh, misinformation monitor report as they called it oh, yeah. came out i had a whole swath of videos removed deleted struck on my channel mainly putin's speeches zakharov lavrov yeah. all those live streams completely taken down of course alongside the rt documentaries that were so popular so that it ironically if you went through that article every single video they flagged was removed so it was a very clear link and it was quite fascinating for me to watch how newsguard published it youtube reacted and then newsweek parroted the same article okay. so it was, it was really eye-opening to see how the u.s state department and their censorship machine works yes. through the front company of a fact checker they were able to lobby a major tech company and censor accordingly Yes. For a while, they played they played a sort of careful game, where they gave me uh, one strike, which was one week ban. Then I was approaching the deadline of my previous demonetization. Uh, it was like ninety days after one strike, uh, and then it was looking like I could get remonetized. So what they did in May, it was a just after Victory Day where I posted my videos in Moscow. Yeah, yeah. What they did is they hit me with a double whammy. So they smacked me with two strikes, which gave me a two-week ban. So they just flagged two random videos, uh, one of which I didn't even show any news articles. I was literally just standing on a balcony in St. Petersburg, and I reported on Spain sending leopard tanks Yes. and the capture of Solidar, and the deepest church, Orthodox Christian church in the world, in one of the salt mines. Yeah. This was again flagged for hate speech, which for me was just showed that there yeah. wasn't any hate speech. I yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Any violence against yeah. any groups of people or persons at no, all. I, I know. I mean, I mean, everybody who follows you knows that perfectly. It's sure. It was it, seriously yeah. eye-opening, but it, it fell within 24 hours of this potential where they could not refuse me remonetization. So uh, then I had the strikes, which then wouldn't allow for any revenue. And again, don't get me wrong. I wasn't hung up about monetization, but I could see the panic that yeah, was yeah. going on. Uh, and then I had this back-to-back -back ban 
So they'd wait until uh, a ban was lifted and then just strike another video. So I ended up with two two week bans, giving me a month off, during which time, in that 24 hour window that the previous ban lifted, John Mark Dugan posted those Mike's Gone Missing in Barkmore yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where yeah. I was literally yeah. only off the radar for 24 hours. But I, then I couldn't post any updates on YouTube. All I did was a community post saying, is my ban lifted, question mark, and a picture of me with a stray dog. And then I was banned again. So <laughs> then people were like, oh, my God, he really is missing. He hasn't posted in ages, we like a to, month now. We have to suppress. <laughs> well, yeah. And then they were like, oh, my God, are you OK? I was deluged with these with these um, uh, messages. And then when that, I was like, they, they wouldn't delete my channel because that's too stupid. That would just, that would show them for who they are. That's just too obvious. A bit like Tucker getting fou- yeah. fired from Fox. I was like, that's just dumb in yes. every sense. Like and forbidden fruit syndrome. And People they, are just going to... Yeah, yeah, and they still want to prevent... I'm sorry for interrupting, but about no, no, t- Tucker is the, is the, I mean, is the, the best example. They still yeah. want to, they don't want to allow him to to speak on Twitter like he's doing. They uh, they allege uh, like his contract obliged and and cannot uh, broadcast on other platforms. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, the it's, desperation it's is yeah. so palpable. It's so obvious mm-hmm. and it's waking people up and it's so counterproductive. That's why I was so sure. I was like, then they wouldn't delete my channel because that's just too dumb. Sure enough, when it looked like my bands were going to lift again, they just flagged another video and that was three strikes. And they said, we've removed your channel for too many instances of hate speech. (laughs) I was like, wow, you've done me a huge favor here. However, um, you know, a lot of people messaged me saying, oh, commiserations and all this. I was like, no, no, it's, uh, it's not something to be commiserating about. It's actually an opportunity now uh, where to move forward. Potentially I can just create a new channel. Um, Or you can just go to work on RT. I could I could go work yeah. for RT. There are so many options and opportunities. It's given me paralysis of choice. The truth is, Telegram is my next biggest audience and platform. Telegram is super mm-hmm. easy to publish to. Um, True. And as I said, monetization or ad revenue wasn't the biggest um, wasn't the biggest motivation. The mission statement, though, really on my part, was to reach as many people as possible, which YouTube did facilitate. YouTube's reach is unparalleled. Yeah, uh, it is. So that's the temptation to try it some way. Uh, when I set up a new channel on YouTube, it actually was quite eye-opening because then I looked at the requirements for monetization um, and live streaming as well. Um, this is what led to it because, again, I didn't want to just fall into the trap of their policies. And interestingly, they had three announcements which spanned from the beginning of the special military operation throughout the year. And a lot of it covered content from Russia. Now, understandably, they demonetized Russian bloggers, Russian um, YouTubers. But it was it was actually when you go through the community guidelines, I then realized I was like, ah, that's why that video from St. Petersburg got flagged. It wasn't the content that Spain sent leopards mm-hmm. or that I was discussing news. Yeah. It was the landscape behind, I believe. Yeah. That was St. Petersburg. Yeah. That was content from Russia. Therefore, in breach of their guidelines. Oh, wow. My uh, mind was just... Russia offers nice landscapes that you cannot show that. <laughs> yeah, no. So I thought, well, if I start another channel where it's not from Russia, it's from my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You know? This you, scenery could be anywhere yeah, yeah, in the you, world. You, and you blur the, the, the background on top sure, of it. Sure. So. <laughs> you could, but obviously that balcony scene uh, was unmistakably St. Petersburg. Yes. So uh, that's just a theory I've got, which is quite amusing. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll play with it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I don't really want to be on a platform that doesn't want me. And so many people have said, like, just go to Rumble and Odyssey. Truth is, it just doesn't have the reach um, in the same way that YouTube does. But then again, uh, the other thing I'm mindful of is YouTube's great for growth. But I guess I had 126,000 subscribers. Whilst I don't want to rest on my laurels, of course, I'd like to reach more people. Um, Growth isn't the priority now. So maybe just stick to the people uh, who want to hear the information. Because at this point, we've probably gathered uh, the majority of them. Not all of them, but the majority of them. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of my logic and rationale and thought process. I do agree with you about on YouTube uh, capacity to reach... Uh, mm. mainly western uh, and that yeah that's the key listeners. thing yeah. and i think it's important to reach the the western 
uh, audience. For example, I judge by uh, the, the 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 small dimension of world where I live in, which is uh, Portugal. Uh, and uh, YouTube is the major thing. I mean, Telegram, a lot of people know Telegram already, but you, 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 you see clearly that the majority of the people, the, the, the everyday Portuguese that you run uh, on, mm. on the street uh, it doesn't know uh, anything. Same about in the Telegram, UK, so. from my experience, Telegram uh, was, I only well, discovered Telegram actually when I came to Russia. Marginal. But, yeah, but since yeah. then, um, I, you know, you get those notifications of so-and-so has joined Telegram. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of my contacts from the UK have then started to join Telegram in recent recent months, years. Yeah. So yeah, it's growing, but yeah, I think that's that's the uh, truth of the matter. I am surprised that uh, YouTube has not taken down the the interview that I have, uh, for example, with uh, with um, Russell Bentley <laughs> in the, from the Donbass, ah yeah because he clearly speaks. Oh. And says all the forbidden words. Uh, I, re I respect Russell for his unfiltered yes. approach. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he really is. He just says it how it is. And yeah, I love that, yeah, he but... says it how it is. Uh, yeah. But I guess that's the. It's because of the the dimension of uh, of my channel uh, on YouTube. Uh, Maybe. I yeah. I have backup on Rumble, of course, of everything I do. So I did as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I was very fortunate in that regard. Thing. About yeah. about. <laughs> Shift, sudden shift about yesterday are you okay are you safe <laughs> you yeah you, you are in moscow right yeah yeah so uh, incidentally i just flown back from chechnya where i'd been in grozny doing an amazing press You've been in, oh all right. yeah and I, I i it was somewhere i was curious about but it wasn't on my immediate list of priorities to go to this opportunity to go and see the Ahmad special forces all these sites, tours, and everything. I was like, "Yeah, we got to do it." So um, initially, I I said no because I had an engagement in St. Petersburg. Uh, but then John, uh, John, who'd arranged that meeting, said, "No, let's cancel that meeting in St. Petersburg. Let's get to Grozny." So we did, and I'm so glad we did. It was eye-opening in many different ways. Uh, just just to give one example, this is a part of Russia that is predominantly Islamic. Uh, Putin talks often, you know, about the multicultural aspect of Russia, but this is one you know, people understand that Russia is predominantly uh, Russian Orthodox Christian. This part is predominantly Islamic, and with that comes no alcohol, you know, no smoking, yep. and, and you know, strict family values, traditions, and all this. I didn't hear a single police siren aside from our escort that was in, taking us in around. Grozny. In Grozny. Okay. And we spoke to the police and we said, what about crime? He's like, well, minimal. Okay. I was like, I, we didn't hear a siren. He was like, no, you probably won't. Uh, there were kids out playing in the, the main square, riding little electric cars around. It was a beautiful scene of families. Such a sort of brotherly feeling, family feeling. Like mm -hmm. these kids are... Biden sort of said that your kids are our kids. No, this is where that actually meant something. Yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't in a perverted way as I took Biden's to <laughs> yeah, <mean>. Biden. Yeah, <laughs> Biden. It was mean, like you know, there's a kid runs up to you. Oh, yeah, you know, it rubs your leg. And... Not, like, yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect. Uh, well, no, there just wasn't that sort of thing. Partly, you know, there's that uh, traditional thing, and we we visited areas uh, where they had their traditional dances and things. And this is culture. This is identity. This is history. This is heritage. These are things that Putin has often spoken about. Right. And these are precisely the things that are missing now in the West where these things have been destroyed. Uh, and even, even taboo in some ways, yes. you feel bad about yeah, yeah. celebrating your particular, I don't know, ancestry, whatever. But this was on full display right in your face. And every day, you know, even the customary clothes that yeah. they wear, speaks of it and it was so refreshing to see that and it was it was just such an eye-opening experience I, I need to get on and edit my video and get you have a sense of harmony in the in the in the society there sure now again i'm not saying it's perfect uh you know in any way but given it's that it's almost the way that we've lived for tens if not hundreds of thousands of years that's still on display again that's not to say they're backwards I was blown away by the investment, the modern infrastructure that's going on, and loads of building. I think Scott Ritter observed the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah. when he, yeah, went true, there. he said true. exactly the yeah. same. And I, I, I agree with him. There's heavy plant machinery building new roads. There's cranes everywhere building ultra modern buildings and things like this. It's really 
uh, really impressive. I've not seen that level of investment uh, outside of Russia, uh, certainly not in the UK uh, on that scale. So there's a lot of money being poured into there. Uh, then we toured the television channels and they were uh, talking about their program where they have heads of the regions. Uh, once a week, they'll come on, answer questions from constituents, you know, people of these areas. Yes. And this is a decree by Ramzan Kadyrov where this has to happen. And these people are uh, responsible for answering these questions and giving factual answers as well. They yeah. will be checked. Not like political on... correctness. And... No, yeah, you can't play political games here. If someone yeah. says, why don't we have you know, street cleaners coming around yes. as they should, and that guy doesn't give a good answer, well, there's going to okay. be repercussions. There's going to be investigations. Okay. So there was this level of accountability where, again, journalists and even citizenry holding government representatives to account mind blown Blowing. away yes 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 yeah yes it is it is i'm 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 and how how was the so you were there while all of the i i've i've read somewhere someone called it the longest day yesterday uh, ah, right no i just landed in moscow and as i landed there was all this talk kicking off for uh, prigozhin and wagner posting this provocation video and it's all starting to go down. My first instinct was jump in the Bulhanka, head down to Rostov, see to myself. All the roads were blocked off and it yeah. all unfolded. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. We, we were, uh, I was uh, following the, the whole situation to uh, Telegram channels like Slavyangrad. You probably know that. Yeah, Slavyangrad's a good one. Uh, yes. uh, that was one I followed. Yeah. Uh, the others, I I posted on my Telegram channel. Just yeah, wait, I, out. Mm -hmm. um, wait out and see because my spidey sense said that a lot was going on here that doesn't meet the eye. There seems to be uh, bigger forces in play going on here. And I think we've seen the acknowledgement of that with the immunity given to Wagner yeah. and this measure taken with Prigozhin going to Belarus. Uh, that wasn't an outcome one would expect from a unit that had undertaken mutiny or armed rebellion. No, no, no. I, I was expecting, like, I'm not going to mm. say... Mm. The, you know, those guys pointing rifles at a certain target with the wall behind, <laughs> if, <laughs> something if like that, this. Yeah, if that's <laughs> to believe, and these actions were as described, certainly in Western media, yeah. then in ancient Rome, we'd have seen at least decimation, if not crucifixion of the entire yeah. unit. In ancient yeah. Rome, we in don't ancient, live in ancient yeah, Rome, no. but you get the idea yeah, what I'm saying when it yeah, comes to Yeah, the equivalent to, to that. In... <laughs> sure, especially with Putin's um, sort of adamancy about you know, inevitable punishment and things like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, the key point, again, I made in my Telegram channel was pay attention to Putin's words. He did not mention Prigozhin by name. No. He mentioned Wagner, yes. but in relation to the capture of Solidar and Artyomovsk. And he talked about, you know, uh, the betrayal of, of those achievements and things like this. Yeah. But he did not say Wagner were betraying Thanks. that. He yes. did not call Wagner no. uh, traitors no. explicitly. The insinuation was there. You could read into that if you so chose. But this is where I was a little bit like, hmm, mm. again, guys, don't, don't jump to conclusions and assumptions here. Because the net result is we've had massive amounts of military assets moved very close to the border. To the border, yeah. To the front yeah, lines. Under a justifiable pretext. Uh, uh, ex yeah but yeah yeah i i know i know uh mm -hmm. i i can see where you are getting at and uh and i i've heard sorts of all sorts of rumors and again these are rumors and speculation because i don't know and i'm sure the people that compose these theories don't know but the other thing was this was a stress test what if nato broke through and marched on moscow yeah what would happen and the results were possibly that certain people that needed to be ousted that couldn't be ousted before can now be ousted, can now be ousted on okay. these grounds. Yeah. So there can be a cleanup of people that politically it would have been very mm -hmm. detrimental or sensitive to do so, including Shoigu. Yeah. Ah, I don't know that, yeah. that Shoigu will be removed. I know I, Shoigu. I read is... somewhere that he, he could resign after this. He could. It it's could also Garasimov. Sure. And, and Maybe Garasimov. Okay. And, and uh, prior to this, what was Putin going to do? Um, fire fire these guys based on social media from Prigozhin? Heck no. Yeah. You know, that's not justifiable. Prigozhin doesn't hold that power. Yeah. But now, maybe, you know, here are the terms that prevented bloodshed or all this. And on the topic of bloodshed, again, we have to keep in mind smoke and mirrors. 
I didn't see any dead Russian servicemen or even Wagner servicemen, despite talk of it, despite the talk of shot down planes Helicopters and, and wreckage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw pictures. But again, then how much was stuffing? Because at least one of those was from a year ago. Yeah. Was old footage recycled. Yeah. We had uh, we had Ukrainians um, jump in trying to stir the pot. Yeah. We undoubtedly had CIA behind some of this. Yes. So th this is where I felt there was very there was way too much to to going on where people just needed to hang back and be fine. And as as I predicted and suspected, this was over pretty quickly. And there is most certainly more than meets the eye. And at the same time, you could observe. Uh, the reaction of in, of the of the general society, uh, like of sure. the society in general, like uh, uh, I mean, if you if you had uh, this mass feeling of unrest uh, in society because of Putin Putin's policies, you could uh, like see an uprising. Yeah, sure. Being if triggered by that. If people were truly, uh, you know, dissatisfied as the West claims, then yeah. sure, this was the perfect opportunity. Yeah. Tobias Elwood. Uh, the British uh, men, uh, member of parliament even tweeted out, now is the perfect time yeah, for Ukraine yeah. to capitalize. It mm. is, yeah. yeah. yeah, And it didn't happen, did it? No. And no. there wasn't a massive uprising. There was actually quite cordial engagements from what we saw. Yeah, between, yeah, yeah. Certainly Rostov and Wagner and, and all this stuff. So uh, I think this is a big own goal from the West. Uh, it was amusing to see them say Wagner terrorists, Wagner freeman, freedom fighters as when it, it suited them. Just one is, line after the other, terrorists, yeah. uh, freedom fighters, terrorists. But then the US <laughs> reportedly yes. didn't want to sanction Wagner because they didn't want to support the Russian government. Or, you know, it, was, it then got absolutely farcical at different times. And that, that was kind of the key thing. Yeah, I think uh, we just witnessed <clears throat> some uh, political theater and pantomime uh, in, re in that regard. So yes. the net result, though, of all the outcomes was a win for Putin and Russia. Yes. Solidification of the society. Some have gone so far to say justification of martial law, if needed, and full mobilization. Oh, I, I don't know about that. I don't believe full mobilization is required. Mm -hmm. But sure, maybe a justification could be made for that. Just the net result is uh, it was it was positive, although confusing and quite disruptive. It shows a level of confidence, if it was engineered and pre-planned, mm -hmm. it shows a level of confidence in the uh, in the society that it could withstand such a, such a, an event True. of that nature. But, but at the same time, uh, Prigozhin uh, uh, had been known for statements on, on social mm -hmm. media, public statements that were adverse to the, to the uh, Russian, mainly the Ministry of Defense. He was yeah, always most outspoken. critic of them, not of Putin, but of the ministry. No, of never Putin. Never Putin. Yeah, yeah. Uh -uh, uh, yeah never said yeah, that. And again, yeah. this is why I felt one has to pay a lot of attention to the actual words used uh, by Putin and both Prigozhin. Now, Prigozhin came out with some some crazy stuff, but <laughs> didn't provide any receipts for it. Didn't yeah. provide any evidence for it. True. Now, I f I see, uh, to my perspective, Wagner fulfilled the role. The, and Prigozhin fulfilled the role that they were assigned, potentially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hence why there's only a slap of the wrist at best uh, for these guys. The ones that refused to follow Prigozhin's orders offered contracts with the MOD. Let's not forget that it's been claimed, certainly by the Wall Street Journal, that the sort of detonator for this was this um, decree that all volunteer detachments have to sign contracts with the MOD. Mm -hmm. That you know, Prigozhin was outraged that. He yeah, yeah, I remember Wagner that. Yeah, and all this. Mm. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what because Ahmad signed those same contracts, Kadyrov, yes. and all this. Um, that's slightly a different case, but PMC Wagner, uh, yeah, was a different case, and that's what they're claiming is the pretext for all of this. Uh, I don't. I don't necessarily believe all that. Remember, it's beneficial for the Russian government to have this outside entity in the same way it was beneficial for the West to have its private military companies yes. that could operate under certain um, laws or outside certain legislation. True. So I believe that's still the case with the Russians. So again, uh, very difficult times, a lot of fog of war and smoke of mirrors. And True. that's when, uh, as I say, the main point, it was confusing. And I think that's the point. It was confusing. Uh, how were how how were the streets of Moscow? Well, uh, all this was fine, just absolutely fine. Normal life going on.
yeah absolutely there were recommendations to not travel uh but not decrees that you couldn't uh roads were blocked like i said i wanted to shoot down to rostov to see what i could see and i was you could see on yandex maps yandex yep, yep, navigator yep, yep. that certain roads were blocked so there definitely were measures there and this this was uh utility vehicles kamazes were just parked there to block the road one lane of traffic was still allowing northern traffic but every car was being checked at the time this is what i was told i didn't yeah. get to see it for myself so there were certainly measures so i can't say that life was completely normal yeah of, of course, course not certainly not on the m4 the m2 and all these other arteries where one could uh, but no incidents around. were registered right no 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 yeah. just no, no. yeah just... and everything's back to normal yeah everything. uh, already yeah, uh, yeah. rostov uh, everything's pulled out uh, so which again makes me feel this is an exercise slash war game and Wagner we used to simulate something but perhaps. It, it has to, it, it's it's like it's very Russian isn't it because you could not conceive the West doing this kind of if it is if it is indeed a, a, a war game and yeah yeah and the <laughs> other mean, thing was it made me laugh it's extreme Lipitz, isn't it <laughs> in Lipitz they actually dug up the road yeah I saw that yeah <laughs> they had that. heavy machinery literally digging up the road and then I read a report from the mayor today he was like yeah it's no problem to fix that yeah, yeah well actually no it's not really like they just get the crews out they've got the heavy machinery and yeah. in fact that's great for the contracts and the money remember <laughs> yeah. as Ritter was saying these city authorities have a surplus of oil and gas rubles True. that they've been assigned they don't know how to spend it yeah well, I was... just dig up the road for this take some pictures and then ah, we'll give some guys a, a new contract and some work and hey yeah I was going to to ask you to comment on uh, Scott Ritter's uh, declarations about this all this investment because it is forbidden to be done abroad because of sanctions it is ah. being done in Russia and therefore there is a s surplus or an abundance of yeah. money to invest inside I've not spoken to the city authorities to corroborate uh, what Scott claimed he heard them say to him okay but i uh, i have seen with my own eyes almost everywhere i went to a screening of daria a documentary about daria dugana before i left for chechnya and even around park Babedi, just scores of cranes new apartments everywhere certainly in moscow well, moscow is one place but then to see it again in grozny yeah you know, down yeah, there, yeah 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 I was yeah. like, everywhere I look, there are cameras, is heavy road building machinery. Then when I go to Donbass, of course, it's the same thing. You've been to Ribbon. Mariupol, haven't you? Mariupol, yeah. yeah. And Mariupol, you can understand. But then we're talking about even new, newer places that have been captured fairly recently. Um, Severodonetsk. Yeah, Severodonetsk. Uh, that's a bit too close to the front lines, but there's still uh, a lot of investment going on in the All infrastructure. Right. So right. this is not somewhere that Russia is feels is expendable that they're going to just step back from okay. they are most certainly making the investments because this is long term and they do believe it's yeah. russian territory yeah donbass is slightly different but what i mean to say is in the major cities across russia all i see is investment and development of infrastructure right and it's it's been a an histor historical criticism by the west that russia doesn't invest in infrastructure everything is crumbling uh, sure. and old and... and that was true for donbass and that was my first impression when i first went there i was yeah, but... like wow i've just walked into a soviet time capsule yeah yeah clearly ukraine didn't now let's be fair to the kiev regime uh for the last sort of since 2014 and yeah, that, yeah. they haven't had access to that uh, that forgives the last eight years but prior to that they had every opportunity in the past 30 years to invest in the mm -hmm. infrastructure and so forth and clearly that wasn't done uh, i've seen i've seen elec you know those electric trolley buses yeah they should be in museums <laughs> they're soviet built and they're still running to yeah, this they're, day they're, well with well if they, run, <laughs> if they run if they run if they go still running because that's what they're designed to do, <laughs> to do like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah that, that's they're sure. still running t-34s <laughs> yes uh, i was also surprised <laughs> i mean i hope they don't go into combat with those but well. oh yeah absolutely yeah. yeah that's right that's why they're running <laughs> yeah sure but because <laughs> russia's run out yeah sure. run out yeah. yeah that that yeah that's another western story russia running out of uh, equipment yeah. and all I, I would like you uh to, to to ask you about your recent experience in the front lines mm -hmm. uh but first of all because the first time we spoke 
live uh you we, we haven't spoke about that i don't think you had intentions yet i don't recall exactly now but uh when did you like suddenly decide to do this uh, raids to the front line to aid civilians uh, with humani delivering humanitarian aid what 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 went through your mind well, i mean what's uh well yeah prior uh, leading process. up to about october november uh, obviously i was reading a lot of the news and it was an idea that kept coming to my mind that you know i need to get down there and help these people and whilst helping see for myself talk to them find out what the actual situation is on the ground and i felt that i couldn't because of uh wife kid family yeah, yeah. you know and that was my first priority and obligation and in truth uh <laughs> it actually came out not through an argument but um <laughs> well maybe it was I then did a video about how the fifth column that fled after mobilization in September. Yeah, yeah, the the four hundred fifty thousand half a million. Yeah, yeah. partial mobilization. Yeah. Many of whom have come back, uh, as has been reported. I said, you know, traitors. You know, the motherland calls. What the hell happens since yeah. Stalingrad and that beautiful monument that I've yet to see in person? But Scott Ritter has talked about. You haven't so, you been know, to Volograd yet. No, not yet. No, no. I'm okay. saving that one. Okay. I was going to visit it the other day on the way to get to <laughs> Rostov. <as> a, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I made this video and I ranted about yeah, yeah. Uh, how if I received the call, I'd, I'd sign up because if this is a society that you do love and wish to protect, then it's something you would do if you receive the summons. At the time, it was just to report to Voina Kamad. It was just to report to the military office and yes. update your details. Let them know where you're living now. So if needed, you can be called upon. That was all that was being asked. It wasn't yet, like a, a draft uh, World War II style. Exactly that. It, it wasn't like we've seen in Ukraine, where yeah. every male between 18 and 59 has yeah. to report to be shipped off to the yeah. meat grinder. It was not that under yeah. any imagination. So the fact that these cowards and traitors, as I call them at the time, got on the first flight to God knows where, Berlin, Turkey, yeah. or wherever, I, that's, that's disgusting. Good riddance to bad trash. I think I Russian saw some society. of them in uh, in uh, I don't know if it was some of them, but I, I saw a lot of Russians in in western in eastern Finland. I was there last oh. I was oh. there last winter, and uh, I ah. saw a lot, lot of them there. And but uh, it's uh, I've been there before. There were some Russians already, so I I, I will not sure. say yeah, it for that, sure. But, areas, but I was I could say that I I thought I saw much more. Mm -hmm. uh, not well, I made this video and I ranted and I, I was very clear on it. And then my wife kind of um, called me out on it and she said, well, it's all well and good for you as a, still a British citizen here still? in Russia to okay. say that without any chance of you being mobilized. Yeah, I said, no, actually, you're right. Yeah, that's a fair point. And people commented the same on YouTube. They're like, well, when are you going to be at the front lines? And uh, it was it was it was just when my wife said. That's all well and good for you to say. I said, fine, I'll mobilize myself. Oh. She's like, wait, what? What? <laughs> okay. She's like, wait, 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 that's not what I was saying. Okay. I was like, I, I know, but no, you, you've called my honor into question, and I'm an honorable man. I okay. agree with you as well, yeah. actually. You're absolutely right. That so is potentially hypocritical of me to sit here in the comfort of St. Petersburg in front of my desk and talk crap about other people who may potentially have to put their lives on the line. Fine. If that's the way you honestly feel that, you know, if I were to stay, I would be hide. Was it my babushka said? She said, yeah. uh, respect to you for not hiding behind women's skirts and going there to see for yourself. Yes. So her mum supported me, <laughs> <laughs> but my wife didn't. She was like, wait, wait, wait. No, that's not what I said. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I said, okay. well, no, sorry. You've said it now. So I've got to go. Uh, and I said, well, and on, you know, on the plus side, I, I thought, yeah, we could visit some orphanages and, um, uh, take some Christmas gifts to them because it was around that time of year. Uh, but also, yeah, it, it would help me in what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, that's what that's what kind of released me. <laughs> you you me. you've been well, you've been through the test then. Yeah, it was like uh, well, when when you when they called the you guilt. when you yeah yeah you lifted the guilt that well I've got to stay home and look after my family. When she said that, I was like, right, fine, I'm off. Uh, I'm going to do this, and it was planned to be about a week or two. 
w would so, you, you know. would you, if you had a chance to, uh, I'm sure you have, I mean, communications are not cut and all, but uh, uh, when you speak to other people, do you have a lot of questions about uh, people that live in, in the West? Do you have a lot of questions about, uh, is it possible to go to Russia? Is it safe to go to Russia? How yeah, yeah, it? of course. Uh, uh, what do you recommend going to Russia to visit, uh, for example, for, to, yeah. for tourism, for example? Uh, most definitely. And I think this is specifically why the UK and the US have urged citizens not to go to Russia and why I was deleted off YouTube for showing Russia is these Western countries do not want people to see uh, that Russia is actually a really good, a really good place to mm -hmm. be. More disturbingly, uh, it was actually my wife's friend who lives in Norway. She is a, well, she's dual citizen, actually. She's Russian and Norwegian citizen, married to a Norwegian guy, and she's in teaching. Uh, the other week, she was told she cannot work with children anymore in teaching. And it, she, you know, they apologized. They said, sorry, there's nothing we can do. This is an order from on high. Uh, there's, there's nothing we can say about it. But a parent then also said, we don't want you working with our children and showing that there are nice Russians. But, the, okay. Okay, blatantly. Uh, this is, I don't, I mean, I, I have many words come to my mind now. But sure. <laughs> uh, and actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full on and say this. And my re initial reaction to my wife was, wait, isn't this worse than what the Jews Jew suffered yeah. in Germany? Because yeah. at least it was limited to Germany, yeah. Uh, yeah, for the main part, as we're taught and understand that the persecution, the horrid, you know, disgusting persecution of those people was within the German borders at those time. This is worse. This is persecution of yes. peoples across an entire continent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Where... it's not just limited to Norway, as I understand. It's across numerous countries. But that level, we, you know, our children cannot see that there are actually nice Russians. They need to be, you know, essentially what that's saying, and I'm uh, extrapolating, is so... that all Russians are bad and that there can't be examples of good Russians, nice but you know, genuine Russian. In, in this uh, in this whole story of uh, censorship, I noticed mm -hmm. there are countries worse than others in Europe. For example, mm -hmm. in, in Portugal, uh, I see. I mean, the news it's banging the people's heads all the time about Putin and Russia. But the general feeling towards Russian people, because we have some people from Russia living here. Uh, it's uh, and also uh, Ukrainian pro-Russian Ukrainians or former Ukrainians. I don't know how to call them now. Uh, mm. It's it's of uh, big tolerance. Uh, fortunately, it is. I don't, we don't see any displays. The only display of violence towards a Russian lady that had a store up in the north of oh. Portugal was uh, was done by uh, Ukrainians. Uh, that yeah, Ukra sadly, Ukrainians I read some of stories. That. Yeah, and we yeah. have some uh, Ukrainians here uh, that uh, had uh, this association organization supposedly to help other Ukrainians that come in, but uh, it's blat blatantly, openly uh, um, lobbying to do for for the Portuguese uh, authorities. In some instances, we have some episodes to um to um, how can i say to to hurt uh, legally or otherwise uh, russians or make the life difficult for uh, yeah, russians in the territory difficult. or or, mm. or people that uh, do not agree or even ukrainians that do not agree with the, mm. with the, with the view and uh, yeah. i've also i've done a podcast about this with a with a ukrainian well, i know firsthand there's lots of russians that moved to portugal yeah, uh, gaming yeah. companies uh, for one of them i, I know that through uh, personal yeah. Uh, experience and, yeah, yeah uh, uh, unfortunately oh, I, I myself I'm thinking of uh, visiting uh, uh, Russia maybe landing in Moscow in a near well, future I've partnered with some immigration lawyers uh, I think it was bit.ly forward slash move to Russia uh, but I'm also pursuing uh, exploring what state programs and state support exist because amazingly through the recent economic forum in St. Petersburg yeah 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 I caught a guy from either New Zealand or Australia, a farmer who's moved to Siberia, uh, set up an agricultural concern there. And I believe, and this has been confirmed by a Dutch journalist, that there is a program to help the Dutch farmers, farmers from the Netherlands. So this is genius. 
take the payout that the EU is giving you to stop farming. Yeah. That's fine. Accept that. Take that capital. Move to, to Russia. Russia. Yeah. And do your farming here. And especially when it comes to the Dutch farmers, we know they are extremely uh, savvy when it comes to business. Uh, true, great true. business. Yeah. Really efficient with their farming. True. They have excellent skills. Well, yeah. Russia's got the space. And Russia's not on the same agenda, it appears, of destroying the food chain. And the, the, production, the, the production infrastructure in general, not only the agriculture, but also Absolutely, in, industry. Yeah, and, the board. Uh, yeah. Now, there are challenges, of course, to be adapted to, such as climate and the season and the length of it. I know even in St. Petersburg, I was caught out when I was trying to well, grow various things, but, how short that window was. But Russia is such a vast country, but, and I'm sure that the Dutch farmers are intelligent enough to be able to adapt certain crops and yeah. um, the soil as well, which is going to differ. And again, this is not an area I'm an expert on, but I'm just, uh, you know, spitballing all these various factors. I believe these these guys would be uh, welcomed with open arms and they'd thrive here in Russia. And that's a genius move uh, from my part, you know, my perspective from the Russian government. Uh, it's just, you know, when it comes to bureaucracy, often there's challenge. And of course, you've got language barrier as well. Okay. Have you heard about this uh, e-passport, e-visa, not e-passport, e-visa that uh, yeah. Russia, Russia, it's about to be implemented in Russia, but only for a group of countries, I think. Friendly countries. Considered friendly. Yeah, because uh, I read it and I was like, yeah. And of course, the United Kingdom was not on that list. I was like, nah, <laughs> so, yes. damn you, Rishi Sunak. I'm hoping that Portugal escapes although it's not it's in the unfriendly list it was added later yeah because yeah. i mean the our government had to do what uh, nato of course uh, of course they're under the, the and the eu demands they cannot is this the portuguese government yeah they, of course I mean, they have to pretend that at least that they are helping the effort the war effort yeah. they sent yeah. a couple of leopards out of service. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably destroyed now, so don't worry. Yeah, about yeah, it. <laughs> it's true. I, I don't think they, well, it's actually worse than that. I don't think they made it to the front lines. <laughs> no, as I, <laughs> these, these leopards were yeah, so yeah, far yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. They would take so much. Even Rheinmetall were like, we, we need someone to pay for this because we're not going to pay for it. These things are pretty much scrap yeah. at this point. And bad publicity, <laughs> so, bad publicity. Yeah. I mean, uh, those leopards. Uh, Oh, there's so much I want to talk about, and I know your time is uh, precious, but uh, I, I, <laughs> I wanted to know, um, one day I'll go by myself and see, but uh, I'm not doing that yet, so I would like to ask you, how do you, when you talk to Russians on the everyday life society, mm -hmm. uh, what are the main subjects for example, that people discuss at cafes when friends meet. Do, is politics uh, a subject? Is general culture a subject? Or are people distracted with the same mindless things that we are used in the in the West? In Moscow, in Moscow, it's the same mindless things that you're probably used to in the West. Like that TikTok being said, and... <laughs> uh, you know, not TikTok. <laughs> no, yeah, I've not like... heard that. <laughs> or even Instagram. Yeah, if anything, it's the relief that these these entities are outside of russia um no uh generally there's the curiosity where i'm from uh why i'm here and all this on a personal level on a broader scale i did have one guy um when i was out with uh, some friends who overheard the english being spoken uh, came up and he was he was against the special military operation and that this was in moscow and that was quite refreshing uh i was having a good discussion with him and i was explaining my position uh, on it, which you know was in polar opposite to his, mm -hmm. uh, but we were able to talk and and um, have a civil adult debate and discussion about it, and do, agree to disagree. Do you think uh, he, he was spoke, propagandized by the West? Uh, quite possibly, and and remember that Moscow is so affluent that a lot of that money has come from the West. Uh, that even in Grozny, I met, a, well, sorry, John met, I also met later after John had struck up a conversation, a guy who lived in Miami. And he said, no, the U.S. for me is almost like Sh Shangri-La. It was like, it's heaven. I love the U.S. That's brilliant. Because, you know, John was saying, well, pff, I wouldn't move back there if I were you from what he was like, no, no, I love it. There we are. And that attitude still remains among a certain level of the population. They still adore the West. They still believe it. it's great. 
uh, and that's what they still aspire to. But that portion of the population has dramatically decreased. And and so in my experience. and so and economy wise, since the last time we spoke about ah, that, yeah. about ten months ago, uh, do you see like the deepening of a crisis? Because you, you know Joe blogs, you know this YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, I've you not know, I've not checked in with Joe for a long time. Uh, I've I've given up. I've given up. But uh, yeah, I, I did it well, because, because I I went to I went to I his thumbnail. The predictions were just laughable. Yeah, yeah. It was like China economy is going to implode. Russian economy is going to implode. And yeah. this was like a year ago now. <laughs> but for for an ignorant person like me, it looks very credible. Or the, uh, or, he or, does or his triple... best. Yeah. But then even if you were just to Google just a couple of points, even in Western sources, you're like, nah, sorry, dude. <laughs> what <laughs> that what, doesn't hold what I did was revisit the first predictions <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and then compare yeah. it to reality now. And so Wishful you can thinking. see utter bullshit. But... <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he's doing well. I'm sure he's making bank and, and all, all respect to him for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, credibility wise, it's down the gutter, down the pan. Do you, Which but is uh, how, how is the, do you feel a recovery? Do Absolutely, you feel... yeah. There's massive, uh, there's there's an interesting sort of phenomenon now. So let's let's focus on the auto industry because that was one of the first yeah, yeah. and hardest hit. And we uh, talked wow, about that. The yeah. Chinese have just swooped in. I think they've now got over a third of the car market to the point where there was uh, an interesting report that parts for Chinese cars were in high demand, not because of any sanctions or anything but because they were so popular that uh, demand outstripped supply because the supply was predominantly on the rail network uh, from what i read interestingly um, we traded in our nissan x-trail because when we went to the dealer mm -hmm. where the last service they said we can't source the nissan parts we'll have to find you compatible parts okay which were of course from china Okay. And it was like, well, why don't we just buy a Chinese car then? Yeah, yeah. So sure enough, we traded in the X-Trail for a Cherry Tigo 7 Pro Max. And everywhere, well, everywhere, yeah, everywhere. Are you satisfied with it? Uh, well, me personally, it's too clever. It's got too much <laughs> okay. gadgets on it. <laughs> okay. like, yeah, it's great. It's, it is fantastic. It's got all the stuff that you want. I love my Buhanka. She doesn't scream at me if I don't put my seatbelt on. Yeah. She doesn't shout at me right. if, you know, whatever happens. And she'll start when I turn the key. She doesn't need some fob and she doesn't need all this stuff. I love my Bohanka. But you did have some criticism about the Bohanka in the beginning, I recall. I absolutely do. I mean, <laughs> I, I love to hate her in many regards. <laughs> and she doesn't like my spine. She yeah. really hates my back, especially. But she wasn't designed for the stuff I put her through. So I forgive her for it. And I still love her from the bottom of my heart. Oh. Uh, and, and going from a Bohanka to like the spaceship that is the Cherry Tigo 7, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's like... Uh, and again, it's an automatic as well. So even going into reverse, uh, I was like, I was fiddling with like, oh, the camera's then here and it's bleeping here and it's got blind spot notifications. I just love my Buhanka. I just dip the clutch, whack it in reverse. I'll, and I'll, I go. That's my dream van. Well, I told you that it last is, time, the but, but it is an inaccessible. The other inaccessible. thing she hates are my knees. And I didn't realize this after Donbass, I came back. I was like, oh my God, I'm so old. My knees are killing me. How tall are then, you in centimeters? Uh, I think I'm 176. That's the same as me. Okay. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> hobbit. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm a hobbit. But then my wife said to me, oh, you realize that back in Soviet times, they had literal health camps for drivers of Soviet cars. Okay. Said, what? She said, yeah. These guys needed titanium knee replacements at the age of 40 because oh. the clutches were so heavy and all this. And in Moscow traffic, seven hours dipping. Yeah, yeah, clutch, the falling, clutch, yeah. My left knee was killing me. Okay. And it's not that I'm a wuss, sir. And it's not that I'm a pansy. And, 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 so it's it's like driving a. It's like pressing on the clutch of a tank of a T30. Oh car. yeah, it's really agricultural. That's how I describe <laughs> it. Yeah, it's not. It's not designed for comfort. It's definitely for function. Yes. And she's only meant to go for like a, a hop off road in the woods, go for a hunting trip, fishing, whatever. It's not meant for the highway cruising that I do. Although ironically, on the highway, it's easy because I don't have to dip the clutch all the time. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah. So yeah, she's she's not the uh, she's a 1960s design, of course. 
Uh, and that's what I love about yeah, it. Yeah, the, well. the same as me. It's the same motive. I love it. It's because yeah. they kept the design there. Pretty much. Uh, and uh, I know safety wise, it's night and day between like the modern <laughs> Chinese cars and the old, uh, well, I say old, she's brand new. Yeah. But the 1960s <laughs> design was, uh, yeah, very different indeed. Uh, when I was uh, in uh, Russia, in uh... In the in the former Finnish territories in back in two thousand and five, ah. that's the that's when I saw the Bohanka for the first time. There were several of them uh, riding them. I was in a town called Sortavala. It's the yeah it's, it's in the rural Finnish places. Yeah. yeah, you'll see them in Moscow. I get stopped and people ask me, "How old is that?" Uh, it's it's twenty twenty two, and they're like, what they still make them. Because everyone's riding Audis, Porsches, Mercedes, and all the same in Grozny. There were Mercedes and all these German cars, Maybach, Land Rover Defenders. Okay. They said in modern places, the Buhanka is a rare sight. Go to Donbass and there's, yeah, it's Buhanka land. She's, yeah, it's Buhanka land. Yeah. Back, yeah, she's back with her, with her brothers and sisters. Ironically, I thought Buhanka is perfect for Donbass because if it breaks down, there's always going to be someone that can repair it. Yeah. Not the case. <laughs> I, the, I think it was the throttle cable went, and uh, it was it was sticking wide open, and I struggled to find a Buhanka specialist because they've all been sort of diverted and recruited to yeah. service the MOD Buhankas. Okay. I was like, oh no, I didn't mm. expect that. Of course, Buhanka is so simple that any mechanic can really work on it. We did find <laughs> someone eventually, but I thought that was a uh, that was an amusing, unexpected uh, side effect. I do have this image that uh, any Russian farmer in those parts of Russia can put uh, an old IS-3 tank to work. Yeah, oh, <laughs> so, sure. sure. And it, I was only being lazy, really, because I, I could have spent the time to strip her down, but I just wanted to pay someone who knew what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, just okay. you know, quickly, so for you, expedience. You, you, you have more trust in the Russian mechanics now? <laughs> no, <good>. no. <laughs> She's been to Uaz like three times and like had all these problems. And then I took her to an actual specialist in Moscow who just overhauled her. And uh, he even said she was burning oil because there was a broken filler cap or something on somewhere. And I was like, well, after three visits to Uaz, they didn't notice that there was this broken cap. And like maybe he was taking me for a long run just to take my money. But I was like, I can believe that. I can believe that Uaz was like, ah, be all right. It'll be fine. Just put more oil in. <laughs> like <laughs> a new car with problems of old, old car problems. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. And again, this is a, like, well, I say brand new. She's not anymore. I put 25,000 kilometers on her in just, what, six months okay. or something. Again, this is stupid work for something that's not designed to do it, really. Do, not in that space of time. Do people in Donbass hold hope for better days? Uh, Yeah. There, there is the hope. Uh, just keep in mind they've been through a lot, so they're under no illusions that it's going to end tomorrow. So, whilst yes, I'll say there's hope. There's also this uh, realism that this is going to be hard, and it's not going to be done easily or quickly. And there are so now it's it's almost worse in certain regards. Before, sure, it was still a proxy war, but not on this scale, and not on this sort of brutality. And my last trip to the front lines, I embedded with an Orthodox Christian uh, battalion, volunteer battalion. And it was one of those guys that opened my eyes a little bit. Uh, and I said, there are many similarities I see to the conflicts between uh, Britain and Northern Ireland back in, in the struggles, as they were called when I was growing up. And he said, yeah. I said that one of the reasons for the brutality is this is both a civil and religious war. Whoa. I was like, well, I'd, I'd not connected that dot yeah between religion and, it's and that not, became it, it's very not mentioned apparent. in the media apart from the no apart and from only, the persecutions that uh... yeah it only recently came to light when we saw uh the kiev regime start to persecute the yeah, priests yeah. and seize the uh, orthodox churches and things like that yeah and that happened and i was like i i actually genuinely believe you there because that was one of the aspects of the northern ireland conflict that was so bloody and so brutal catholics versus Protestants, Protestants yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we yeah. see these, uh, yeah, Orthodox Christians and the Ukrainian Christians and stuff, and I thought, wow, that was a layer that I'd, I'd not really connected before, and it makes a lot of sense, and it really is brutal and bloody. It's horrible. And now a, a more general broad question. I would like to uh, know your opinion about 
do you think the west is is uh, willing to bleed ukraine dry of because if absolutely it, yeah because if, absolutely. if it's if it, if it keeps going at this rate it's i i, I mean I have no words. What what will will be of future generations in the in what's left of Ukraine? Well, we're having a generation annihilated. Annihilated, now yeah. On the scales that we haven't seen since the world wars, uh, and the commensurate sort of knock on effects that that's going to have to Ukraine. Ukraine is expendable, of course, to the U.S. interests, uh, not just U.S. but let's say NATO and and the collective West. Uh, and the sooner the Ukrainians wake up to that, the better, uh, because no one, not even the people of Donbass want that either, uh, due to their connections as well. Uh, and with these, with the now more rounds of mobilization, uh, I do feel sympathy and sorrow for the guys getting rounded up off the street. Uh, a lot of talk is said about, you know, uh, NAZIs yes. in Ukraine, and we know that not every one of them is far right, is of that yeah, yeah, of course. persuasion I mean, or, or mm -hmm. belief. Uh, so it's not fair to paint them with that brush uh, and label them all that way. So, yeah, there is a lot of sadness and sorrow. That But when you start to teach that in kindergarten... Yeah, yeah, and this is the issue, again, Scott Ritt has highlighted it, of this ideology that's been supplanted and implanted in there uh, that's rife, and what Putin has said Russia is fighting against, and he's absolutely right. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, again, not to say that everyone is of that persuasion, but it is in a significant part of the power structure and society that, like a cancer, it needs cutting out, and it needs to be cured and gotten rid of before any any form of peace or progress can be deemed to have been made. Have uh, you had that's the not an easy thing. Have you had the chance, or would you like to have the chance to interview a P an Ukrainian POW? Yeah, I requested it last time, but my citizenship prevents me. Uh, part of that is lessons learned, I think, with the uh, the coward and hypocrite Aidan Aslin. Oh, um, uh, I saw. Uh, yeah, I saw it. I saw the last post he made, or maybe one of the last posts he made, mocking. Yeah, from uh, Hirson. Yeah, yeah, from Hirson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've also seen it with Sean Pinner, who was uh, who posted last. I saw was uh, an engagement back on the front lines. Uh, then we've had other people. I won't name names yet, but there were Irish guys who fought for Donbass. One of whom has just served an eight-year prison sentence for fighting for uh, the DPR. Yeah. And my question is, well, what law were you prosecuted under? Is that not the same law that Aslin and Pinner yeah. should have gone to jail for? Yeah. Well, and he said, well, yeah, I just fought for the wrong side. I was surprised. The uh, British government. I was surprised because they were, I thought, when they were convicted the, the, to the death sentence, I believe. Uh, yeah, there was a moratorium, though, on the death sentence at the time. But the complete uh, disregard, um, disdain that they've shown towards yes. that reprieve for me, says volumes about them as people. True. Uh, really. True. But yeah, I that's agree. why I wasn't permitted to uh, interview these POWs. It was deemed too politically sensitive. And I agree. I understand. Uh, I, I saw the interview when Aidan Island was captured with um, Graham Phillips. There's Graham Phillips and even John Mark Dugan yeah, yeah. Uh, did one with oh, him where oh, Aidan Aslan oh. voluntarily sang the Russian national national anthem. Oh yeah, that yeah. I saw. I that saw him removed, removed from YouTube. I believe okay. Graham Phillips is was Graham Phillips is reinstated. There, there was something along these lines. Uh, it's really hard to keep track. But uh, certainly from the DPR side they don't they don't want all that negative uh, publicity again now. And those accusations of using prisoners of war for propaganda purposes and things which Again, one has to understand. The The answer is, though, yes, I would like to. I did request to. That being said, I have access to Russian citizens who are able to interview them. And I've subtitled a lot of Isabella Lieberman's uh, interviews. She's, yeah. she's a great journalist doing amazing work down there, uh, where she's also trying to match up uh, prisoners of war with family so that because the Ukrainians put them just down as missing in action, whether they're dead or not, to yeah. refuse paying out the compensation. Yeah, yeah, they, the they do not assume they're killed. Yeah, yeah, everyone's just down as missing in action. So the families don't know if their husbands, brothers uh, are alive or dead. So through her interviews, uh, she's able to reach out sometimes to connect these people and send messages between them to loved ones, which, as you can imagine, is just invaluable. 
it, it's priceless beyond yeah. measure to be able a lot of these wives of course are pregnant and expecting children as well so you know to know that their father is safe for you know in russian custody and hopefully when this time comes to an end the the child will be able to see its father is a huge relief uh, so yeah there's a definitely these humanitarian factors in there and i'd love to be able to help myself but i have to accept that and understand that the circumstances don't permit it by all the news that we keep hearing through uh, mainstream media like uh, cnn although they admit some failures but very <laughs> lightly yeah but by this time uh, with all the advances you should moscow should be besieged uh, by this moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. one would all wonder the gains. <laughs> all the gains that uh, yeah all the made. gains yeah the all the yeah, villages yeah. and all the incremental gains now they're calling yeah. it yeah uh, and again it is we can joke about it but the loss of life yeah, not true, even to reach true. the the front the first line of defense has been appalling but they, they keep on uh, they, they keep... have to they've got this meeting in vilnius uh, upcoming which they tried to use the alleged russian coup as some form of display of whatever to try and justify funding Ukraine further for the money laundering operation they've got going on there, uh, being paid for in Ukrainian blood. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just criminal. So uh, again, maybe maybe yesterday, as Ritter and um, okay. Colonel McGregor have said, this is this is literally criminal what the West is doing. Yes, I I do agree, and. Uh... Well, at least the, the yesterday's events maybe gave them some off ramp, at least in speech wise, to do at this next forum, like claim some sort of victory or saying. Uh, that unfortunately, you... the way it was resolved, no. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, I think. Well, they can that ignore hope. that part and you know. No, I, yeah, I don't hammer see up any the off-ramp. hammer up uh, the story. <laughs> yeah. They might, yeah, they might try and say, look, there's sufficient. Um, lack of faith in putin that yeah. warranted this to kick it off but they're really grabbing at straws and that's the main thing they're desperate and they're grabbing at straws it makes it dangerous we've heard reports today of explosions at the zaporozhia nuclear power plant we've had the kokovka dam which yeah. is very clearly uh, a western operation to benefit ukraine it's very difficult to make the case that russia again bombed itself yes uh, and yes. caused itself yes. so much calamity mm -hmm. after nord stream and all the such like the concern now is that in their desperation they will now cause a provocation with the zaporozhia nuclear power plant specifically to have nuclear fallout affect a nato country to justify some next level of escalation well you had uh, lindsey graham menace uh oh sure uh, um Yeah. threatening not menacing uh, confuse the portuguese uh, threatening if uh, russians do well. uh, okay yeah <laughs> okay yeah. if uh, if uh, russians uh, uh, do this uh, kind of uh, thing and uh, attack this infrastructure and provoke this nuclear fallout it gives us sufficient re reason to I mean, right, Lindsay, yeah. Lindsay, you know, Lindsay Graham is is profiting his best money. In Lindsay the Graham world. is one yeah. of the most despicable human beings, beings I think, yeah, yeah. one of uh, walking this earth at this time with his warmongering and his words. Uh, so, yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, that's absolutely. I've not seen that uh, interview myself or seen those words, but I can absolutely believe that he would say such words. One mm. one uh, one question is that I'm very curious about this. Do you miss the West? Do you miss your roots? No, uh, no. no, I obviously I, I do love my country, uh, the UK, uh, or at least the country of my birth. Um, and I do want the best for it. Uh, I know that the elites and the leaders don't. Something that was a huge contrast from what I saw in Grozny, where I saw leadership that was investing in its people and its future uh, for its for its furtherment and betterment, whereas I see the opposite in the UK. Uh, I know the same is happening in the US, where uh, relatives of friends of mine are now saying that they're fighting in parking lots for spaces to sleep in their cars, often with children, that despite the news, the US is certainly in a recession, if not depression. Uh, so no, I don't miss anything from the West because the West doesn't represent my values Uh, and I'm talking specifically about the UK, but of course it applies for many countries. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't offer the life that I want. It doesn't offer the conditions I would want for my children. 
Uh, it doesn't offer me the pros prospects that I want for either of those lives. Uh, and it doesn't ha give me hope uh, for certainly my personal or the collective future. And these are huge things, which I think uh, contribute to the epidemic of depression that is rife in yeah. these countries. It is. And I'm not even going to touch on the, you know, the rot that is set into society itself. Again, something that I witnessed in Grozny and Chechnya, that rot doesn't exist because they abide by these age-old tenements of society and living amongst each other mm -hmm. uh, of these values and these codes. Uh, that doesn't mean that you have complete freedom, but maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should operate within parameters to have a healthy relationship with your neighbor. So maybe, yeah, you, you can't do certain things or say certain things or act in a certain way because it's not beneficial for uh, society in general. And the West, I, I, well, the people of the West, I think, are understanding this now. Uh, that freedom on certain things is, is good, but there do have to be rules. As we were taught as children, if we remember growing up, we wanted to do anything yeah. we wanted to do, but we understood the value and benefit of operating within a certain parameter. Rules. I'm not... Yeah, I'm not justifying censorship yep. per se, but have the rules, state the rules, and clearly enforce the rules in a way that one can understand, not rules for thee and rules for me. Uh, we, we hated that when parents just said, just do as I say, yeah. not as I do. Yeah. yeah, We rebelled as that as children, yeah. yet we see that from we... the West. Yes, yes. Do you, what would you say to a person that accused you of being, for, because I, I imagine that Many do accuse you of being uh, on a Russia's government payroll and yeah. being a, a, a pro <laughs> foreign agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I own it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's why a I own it. Foreign agent. Foreign but agent. Uh, what what do you say if a, a person, not a person that just wants to attack you, but genuinely believes that you are that? That's fine. They can believe whatever they like. Uh, Claire Daly, God bless her heart, she had the same accusation leveled to her in the European Parliament. Yeah, she's she's. she's uh, great. I think that was from the Polish representative <laughs> saying, you know, yeah. how much money had you accepted from Putin? Yeah. And she quite rightly was appalled by it, and she said it's kind of an ad hominem attack. Yeah, just, yeah. You can't if you can't argue with what's being said, just attack the person. Attack the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's 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 what happens. So it's water off a duck's back for me, because I stand by my beliefs and the evidence that I present to support that. Um, so yeah, I mean those those kinds of people aren't usually worth listening to. And I resort to Mark Twain's quote, where I don't argue with these idiots because they'll drag you down to your, their level and beat you with experience. Yeah, so. it's like don't 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 play chess with a pigeon. Because you will mess up the board, shit on it, and walk away. <laughs> yeah, walk yeah, away with a well. full chest. <laughs> yeah, and then the other aspect <laughs> is we again we can de you know agree to disagree. If you're happy uh, with that society, by all means participate in that one. But you know, I I'm talking from the experience of having lived in both, so I can extol the virtues of one uh, and the other. You know, against because neither is perfect. But I can say which one I prefer, and I can say why. And there are many people that support and believe me in that. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean I have to be paid to say that. That's what I think people can you know can't comprehend. Nine times out of ten, these are people who haven't had the benefit of my experience. They don't know what they're talking about, and that's fine. In which case, I'd say, well, you know, prove me wrong. Come and see for yourself. But this is that's too much action for a keyboard warrior. They just want to just shit talk anyone that they can because it's easy and then they can delete and block you yeah, and yeah. move on and move on yeah yeah, yeah. Just, just like that yeah i understand well like i said i will try to i will apply maybe in october i will apply i say maybe because it depends on my yeah uh, no, on I my holiday understand. schedule from work and I, yeah. I, I will apply for the visa and uh, i wanted to That's go certainly... with... I wanted to go with my young daughter, with my teenage daughter, oh. but my wife doesn't uh, doesn't like the idea of her tagging along in such trip. Uh, Maybe but, not uh, the first time then. Yeah, Maybe, yeah, uh, I, I will do like a recon trip and, yeah. and then come back and and, yeah, say, and report it. And, maybe and if you I, do, hit me up. So uh, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will for sure. I would love to have the chance to have this chat. 
uh, in, uh, in, Likewise, uh, in, in the I'd presence. Love to, yeah. in presence. It's Rick really, uh, I must say, that it's been a pleasure to talk to you. You are, uh, uh, I, I love your, I, I mean, I followed your uh, channel and uh, I can see that you are, uh, I have the perception that you are very sincere in, 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 in the mm. arguments you put forward and the way that you think. And I really respect that. And uh, I hope we have the chance to to talk more. I won't bother you now for some time because I, <laughs> I know <laughs> no, you. No, no, dude, it's okay. <laughs> uh, and I, I I really wish you wish you all the best. And and I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't uh, like uh, judge it wrong if you take a, a job in RT. I ah uh, yeah, thanks for <laughs> saying that because I have I have been agonizing. I have been agonizing. <laughs> if only to sort of uh, in all truth and fairness. Uh, someone commented the other day on, uh, I think it was Podbean, where I did a podcast. I was experimenting with that platform. It looks very promising. Someone said, what qualifies you to, <laughs> to talk about this? And, uh, you know, that, that's a good question. My response was, well, nothing really. Uh, it said, what qualifies you to be a journalist? I said, well, actually, that's a title others have given me. Uh, you know, as I said, my channel was always, first of all, from, <laughs> from gaming. So another reason I'm not sad that I.L. Grey is dead because it was a hangover from gaming days. But um, this the reason I'm agonizing over working uh, for an established international uh, television company is actually to maybe you know learn some skills um, that I could benefit from, be it in presentation, be it through investigation, uh, whatever, even speaking on camera perhaps, just to be, be better able to deliver that information. And then also in the hope that the current circumstances won't last forever, maybe in the future uh, it can be carried on, extended maybe to China, you know, other places cool. uh, where people are curious and the West seems to wish to block that. Um, I've got, yeah, I've got a, I'm struggling with staying independent and the benefits of uh, working for people that have the experience and the means uh, and the resources as well to get to places that as an independent, as I, we've just talked about with Ukrainian POWs, yeah. perhaps with the backing of a major international TV network, that could be possible. Possible, yeah. yeah. Maybe. But uh, the yeah, accounts I've heard uh, from people that worked on RT is that they were never like, um, uh, they were never held back from what they wanted to do. Yeah, same. Yeah, this is, again, a myth. You know, people think you're just the state's mouthpiece and you're very limited. The, I've heard the opposite, uh, where RT are very accommodating and welcome initiative and uh, welcome things like this. Uh, and the editorial team is not too dictatorial uh, in, yeah. <laughs> in what they they uh, promote and things like that. So there are a lot of good things I've heard, which just make it harder <laughs> for me. And now, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that I'd yeah, be accepted yeah, and work yeah, for okay. But it's still a, an opportunity I think I would regret not exploring to the fullest. I'd be I'd be happy uh, either way to be accepted or even to be declined because it, that way I then know which which path I'm going to walk. I would be happy if you would if you would go for it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, and I, I'm I sure a lot of people. It. I mean, your followers. I mean, what you don't have anything to lose. Let's. let's well, be, if uh, let's if I were to go ahead, I would look as YouTube as the stepping stone that gave me the uh, means to be able to uh, capitalize on such an opportunity. So you know that's how the universe works. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, and I believe. Uh, yeah, I'd, I've mentioned him before, but Paolo Coelho, uh, one of my favorite books is The Alchemist. Yes, and, uh, that's uh, my, yeah, my mother philosophy. tried to recommend me that book uh, many, Definitely many years it. ago. I haven't it read it. I haven't read one. it. <laughs> you have to. You, you should. I think everyone should because it is a very powerful piece of literature that uh, I've often recommended. Okay, and uh, we hope it doesn't get censored because you recommended it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Interestingly, Co Coelho did uh, a recent, I think his latest book was uh, The Trans-Siberian Railway in Russia. Uh, unfortunately, the review I heard was not positive. It was actually one of his worst, I was told. But I was also told he did he did it from Moscow to Vladivostok, let's say. He did it from um, the, the west to the east. And once he arrived, Putin wanted to meet him, so he had to fly all the way back <laughs> to go and meet Putin. At the well, I, I, would, I would fly to go if I have the time. I would to, as well. To, yeah, to yeah I'm not Putin. saying that's yeah, a bad yeah, thing, but I thought that was hilarious. That, oh, yeah. you've, you've just gone through all this epic journey and you have to go, whoop, <laughs> go back again.
<laughs> okay, man. It's like I said, I, I will repeat. Just to, I have one one last question, the before we before we we wrap this up. And uh, do you think honestly have you traded because I I can see and you've stated that you you like what you see in the in the society in the Russian society uh, about values and, you, and things seems to be in place according to your own values. But do you think you have traded? some of the so-called western liberty for those values or do you you feel the same liberties as you had in the west adding well, yeah i have have more freedom and opportunity here in russia okay. uh i see basically the good things i or i i guess i, I was born in 1985 so the late 80s early 90s i think was maybe towards the end of probably the golden era the heyday of the west Yeah. Uh, more so for the US than the UK. Uh, Britain was sort of more declining back then. We had the coal uh, riots and stuff. But yeah, back then there was still this semblance of these values. Uh, and at least you could, it was the final days where, you know, there was the working man that could provide for his family, afford a house, yeah. a car and holiday. Uh, definitely towards the end in the UK, but I think still a potential opportunity in the US. Currently, they, these opportunities still exist in Russia where you can survive on uh, a married man's sort of income. Uh, of course, single man's income as well. But yes. uh, yeah, you can provide for a family. How long that lasts, I don't know. I see some worrying signs in uh, in the economy that those... That I see more credit now being issued for okay. mortgages for property, which is you know, kind of a worrying L sign. Let's hope it doesn't follow the same model. Yeah, seen. that's my yeah. concern. Yeah. Uh, so again, for people, stop hanging about, um, get out of uh, the decrepit West and try and capitalize on the opportunities that I won't even say just Russia, but the East still offers. And uh, most of the East shares, you know, in BRICS countries, I would say, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, that may be too broadly speaking, but for the most part, uh, the BRICS countries offer, but certainly in the East where you can perhaps live in, in the manner that you were brought up and accustomed to that you just can't achieve in the West anymore. anymore. And that's a that's a fact I think most would agree with. Yeah, yeah I've struggled myself to Yeah, uh, I've, I've lived uh, it. I've, I've now I've now have found a better job in oil and gas industry. But, uh, yeah, don't <laughs> yes. tell Greta Thunberg, but yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we just sometimes we have uh, groups of um, people that uh, go and... Um, Pro, uh, I, don't know, I just um, manifestations, uh, protests, uh -huh, protests, yeah. protests, protests, yeah, 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 pro climate protests. We just had yeah, uh, a, couple, yeah. a couple of months ago in my place of work, we had yep, people sure. blocking all the exits and entrances, and well, they got nothing better to do, have they? So, <laughs> clearly, That's okay, man. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up now again. Thank you very much. Pleasure. It was a Great. real pleasure to talk to you Likewise. and uh, I will, of course I will spread this video in as many as platforms as I can and send uh, me the link and I'll do what I can do as well yes so. I will I will and uh, we keep in touch and how yeah. do you how do you say bye the bye I don't know what bye, that bye. means <laughs> yeah does we done yeah I see you man thank you let's see and stream here and and stream